gold's going to be hard to uh, to exchange. So you're going to need you're going to need a little bit of gold and a lot of silver. At the end of the day, as you mentioned, the only reason the dollar has value is because it was originally pegged to gold, and and gold is really still the true money. Um, so you mentioned also with uh, Lebanon, what's happening there is that in dollar terms, the price of everything is falling. So in this environment, if we do see hyperinflation or, or whatever sort of end game we end up seeing, if you hold gold, the real money, um, you'll probably be able to buy a whole lot more things. It'll actually be a deflationary environment with respect to gold. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Look, if you're a Lebanese and you own dollars now, you're, you're doing pretty well. Um, but come what come the day and those Lebanese that have those dollars, they're not going to be able to buy anything either. So if you if you're in Lebanon and you're stacking gold or silver, um, you know, probably silver would be easier because if you want to buy food, gold's going to be hard to uh, to exchange. So you're going to need you're going to need a little bit of gold and a lot of silver. Uh, and if you're if you hold that, then, yeah, you can acquire dollars with that. That that shouldn't be a problem. It's just one more step if you need to buy if you need to have dollars to buy your food. Um, but you know the the Le- Le- the Lebanese are going to go through another round of hyperinflation when the dollar falls, <laughs> but so is the whole world. So the, it, it, what's going to happen in the end game is basically what's happening in Lebanon, but in the whole world. And instead of dollars, the dollars are going to be gold. So it, if if everyone is holding dollars and those dollars are no longer worth anything, then the world needs a the world needs a liquidity to trade with. It needs a money. And according to the Austrian School of Economics, liquidity is money. It's the same thing. Uh, so when we become Lebanon, then everyone who owns gold is going to be able to buy their consumer goods really, really cheaply, including real estate and almost everything. Almost everything is going to be devalued against real money because in a world where most people don't have money, the division of labor can potentially break down. So you need the economy, the global economy this time, not just the Lebanese economy, but the global economy to incentivize as much as humanly possible to get that money circulating again to maintain the division of labor or whatever is left of it. Otherwise, we could really see society break down. I, we're not going to see that because the prices, that the things that you could get to from exchange of gold and silver are going to be so radical and, so, and, and s- such a good rate that people are not going to be able to resist. Uh, and um, that's that's what's supposed to happen at the end of these at the end of these cycles, right? So typically, when we've seen hyperinflation, like in Zimbabwe or I assume Lebanon as well, um, the kind of modern day hyperinflation, a lot of people will turn back to you know an alternative currency like the U.S. dollar, use that instead. Um, but if the U.S. dollar experiences hyperinflation, um, there really won't be any alternative, right? Because the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency right so if the dollar has trouble then all other currencies would seemingly be in trouble as well right and if if you take it if you just expand what has been happening uh since 2020 just monetarily right the the fed the fed prints a whole bunch of money expands its balance sheet and then all of the central banks they're pretending to be wise on their own and do what they need to do for independently for their own countries and their own territories, but really they're just following the Fed because they have to. Uh, we're seeing the same thing now. The Fed is is pushing up interest rates and putting the brakes on the money supply, and so are the other central banks. They're raising interest rates and putting brakes on the money supply. They're not doing anything independently. Really, the Fed is the central bank of the whole world, and everybody follows it. Why? Because because these currency regimes, they have to keep their currencies in a general trading exchange window in order to maintain their economic structures as they have been, or else there's going to be a serious upheaval in their countries where the exporters are going to complain, the importers are going to complain, people are going to lose their jobs, and things are going to have to be reorganized. It's like telling your kid to clean your room, and uh, and they don't want to because it takes a lot of energy. But like, there's a lot of garbage that is built up in all these economies, and all the central banks are following the Fed. So, uh, you know, when when the dollar falls, meaning to expand that out, when the dollar starts hyperinflate, it's not like the euro is going to do so well all of a sudden. If if the euro if 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 the dollar hyperinflates and the euro and the ECB decides, OK, we're just going to we're going to raise interest rates and strengthen the euro while the dollar collapses, then well, then the entire trade flow relationship between the EU and and the United States will reverse. And uh, and that's that's going to disrupt the entire trade system and these politicians are not built to handle that so they'll just all hyperinflate with the dollar 
Now, we've talked about before the banking crisis, and I wanted to see your perspective on how these latest developments we've been seeing really tie into this um, and kind of show that we might be headed closer to the end game. We saw two banks, one bank uh, a takeover, Bank of California, or PacWest was taken over by Bank of California. And then we saw a small Kansas bank fail in the last couple of weeks here. Um, your perspective on the ongoing bank crisis and how it ties into all of this. Uh, so PacWest, um, if I'm remembering this correctly, I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Uh, I was following the stock price because that was the next bank to fail. So if I remember correctly, what happened with PacWest is they released their earnings and it was like it, it blasted through expectations. It was a great thing. And then the stock price went way up, like 20 percent or something. And then it was either that day or the next day or two days later or some very, very short amount of time later where there was a press release. They were selling. They, they were being sold to the Bank of California. So, like, what was that earnings statement about? Like, OK, so they had great earnings and whatever. And uh, the shareholders are really excited and the, the high frequency trading algorithms go crazy and they push the stock up 20 percent. And then all of a sudden there's a press release. Uh Oh, we're, we're selling ourselves to the Bank of California <laughs> goes back down. So what does that what does that tell me? That tells me that I, you can't really trust any of these earnings statements from any of these banks. Why? Because they're they're the engines of inflation that they, they make money through and through the inflationary process. So their earnings themselves are are really nothing because we. We, it's hard to even see what's going on behind the the uh, the front end earnings statement, the two dimensional. Okay, we earn this much in the, this in the, this sector, earn this much, and we have this much dollars now more. But like they have all of these inflated assets on their balance sheet that could collapse at any time, which is why PacWest sold itself to Bank of California because despite their amazing earnings, they couldn't survive alone. So that, but that's the thing with banks. So we, we saw the, th the same thing with. Um, Silicon Valley, like it was, it, it it was fine, and then one day there's a press release and it's zero. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the nature of these inflationary engines. You can't trust what they what they actually have under the hood because when you come, the, the most basic thing to keep in mind is these banks have no money. They have paper that they shuffle around, and and when the paper goes up, they say, oh look, we have earnings, and when the paper goes down, they lose them all and lose everything. That's that's the nature of an inflationary system. It's all an illusion. That's it. It's all an illusion. So you're saying it's an illusion because it's not based on gold. It's not based on anything real. Yeah, it's, that's why. Well, as as the engines of the inflationary system, these banks are the sources of the mirage. So they're, they're like closer to the blast radius, so to speak. And when when the when the inflationary system kind of eats itself, they're the first victims. So you could say the same thing in the ripples out, uh, you know, the, the biggest companies get hit the most if we're talking about the fangs or the Googles or the big tech or whatever. And the, the, they're the first to like really fall hard in a, in a recessionary implosion. And then the, the, um, the ripples go out and out. And then all then the blast radius from the banks, uh, you know, ripples out to the smaller and smaller companies and all these stocks go down. But the closer you get to the consumer sector, uh, the better things are. And the closer you get to the banking sector, the worse things are. It's an explosion. Uh, so the ones to be hit worst by that explosion are the banks. And in this case, it will be the central bank itself. Like when the Fed really goes bankrupt, um, which it already is, it's just we're waiting for the results of that to manifest themselves. When the, when the Fed goes bankrupt, all of its banks go bankrupt. And then every company that has dollars go bankrupt. And the only companies that survive are the ones with a store of real money of gold and silver somewhere in a safe or in a, in their uh, accounts or whatever they hold gold and silver in, or any any company that has real assets that it can trade for real money. But if they don't have any of that and they're just uh, dependent on, you know, the inflationary dollar, they're they're going to lose everything and then their assets will be sold off. 